We're less than two weeks away from college football starting on all levels throughout the country. NAIA, Division II, Division I, you name it. High school football is not that far away as well. And honestly, this is such a great time of year because we're just about to get to watch some football being played, watch some college football as opposed to just talking about it. And it's been fun talking about college football throughout the summer, but I'm ready to watch some football as well. Today, I had the opportunity to be a part of the Frontier Conference Football Media Day and just a few takeaways from that as the coaches throughout the conference. Let's just start right there. They're ready. They're ready for football. They are very passionate. That is one of the takeaways from this. The Frontier Conference is a great football league, and it has great history here in the 21st century, especially with numerous national championships and teams that have made trips deep into the playoffs. And you can tell. The coaches are very passionate about this. And I mean, it is top to bottom. Nine teams now in the Frontier Conference with the addition of Arizona Christian. And everyone from top to bottom, bottom to top, however you want to see the preseason rankings, you look at Coach Jerome Sowers, whose team at MSU Northern last year didn't win a game. Still, he is passionate about his team, passionate about what they can bring to the table this year and and some of the progress that this team is making. Last year, it was not the... Not the results that they wanted, but it didn't matter. It hasn't taken away from what he sees that he can do. And you go all the way up and, and you look at a program like Carroll, Coach Troy Purcell, and, and the passion that he had when talking about his team today. And, and he had an opportunity to look at a roster and was able to see you know the players that he has on his team. He could talk about them, but he really – you got the idea. He didn't need that roster. I mean, talking about each player individually and and what they bring to the table and what their personal habits are, are I mean, it, it was just, it was fun to listen to and to hear these coaches and and hear what they had to say about their teams. And um, I, I'm, I'm ready for football now watching them. Another thing that I take away, Eastern Oregon, let's, uh, let's talk about them for just a moment. Coach Tim Camp, he's ready for football without a doubt. I mean, he's he's ready to play. Coming into his 16th season, the winningest coach in Eastern Oregon history, and last season was not, by any stretch of the imagination, not the results that he wanted, that the program wanted. He took responsibility for it, but they're, they're making some adjustments, and, and he's ready to make those changes. And you look back with a, a, a storied program like his and what he's been able to do there. I mean, two and nine last season, that is that is the least amount of wins that the program's had in his tenure. And that's actually less wins than East Oregon had during the COVID year. There were only four games played. They went three and one that year. They won more games that season. He's ready to make some changes. And he has uh, one of those changes, a big change, as he hires across the state and brings in Austin Brown as the offensive coordinator. And you look at Eastern Oregon last season, this is a team 92nd in the NAIA in points per game, scored right at about 12 and a half, 12.3 points per game. That was overall, that was with the two wins. And the two wins that they had, they won pretty big. But you take away those two wins, this is a team that put up only eight and a half points per game in the nine losses. And so something had to be changed. And, and, Coach Camp made that change. He brings in Austin Brown, and Brown last season as the offensive coordinator for Southern Oregon had the Raiders putting up more than 27 points a game. That's that's better than two-to-one ratio right there, more than twice as much. But obviously there were a different set of circumstances. Same teams in the league, different players, and so you're going to do different things with different players. But the changes are there, and Coach Camp is, is ready to get things going and ready to make some adjustments, and I think he's ready to play right now. So that was a takeaway. I think another takeaway is the fact that Arizona Christian's in the league. This is a program or a team, I think a program that's an anomaly right now, not just because it's way down to the south and the the temperature, which was brought up on more than one occasion, the, the temperature differences between what Arizona will see in the month of November and what Montana and Oregon will see in the month of November. Uh, definitely, though, what those two places will see in the month of September, too, realistically. But November being a, a big-time thing, it's an anomaly. And and the coaches didn't seem to know where exactly to put Arizona Christian in the preseason ranking because of that. Now, you don't want to take away from teams that have been in the league all along. You're not sure where to put this team. But this is a team that won a conference championship under Coach Jeff Bowen, who's been there through the entirety of the program 
in its 10th season now, four conference championships. They were conference champions last year. They made it to the NAIA playoffs last year and rallied actually against a Morningside team. It was it was quite a quite a game in that windy windy area of Sioux City, Iowa last year. Arizona Christian likely should be picked higher than 6, but not sure what to do with them. They are an anomaly and they can put points on the board. Now this is one of those things Frontier Conference teams don't always put points on the board. Not that they can't but they don't always put points on the board. Arizona Christian last year put 39.8 points per game on the board, nearly 40, fifth in the NAI in that category. And you have Tyler Duncan coming back, who's been with the program, it seems like, since at least the Clinton administration, uh, that, wow, can how, how does he keep having that kind of eligibility? Well, this is his final season, but he's a dual threat quarterback. He can pass the ball. He can run the ball. He can do what he needs to do. Tyler Duncan is back. Is the Arizona Christian offense going to adapt to what the Frontier League provides, or is the Arizona Christian offense going to make the Frontier Conference defense adjust to what it will provide? So we'll see about that. Another takeaway also was uh, what I got from College of Idaho's coach Mike Morosky, and just, again, passion for the game, but what – an outlook, and he's ready for football. I think uh, among all the coaches, he put it in a succinct uh, a succinct way saying he's ready for football to be here. It's the greatest game, and he wants it to be here. But he, the, the, the love and the relationship that he shared about his players was just so great to see, and getting to hear him not only in the overall setting, uh, in the, the breakaway room, and just getting to hear him talk, uh, talking about his players, Uh, It was fantastic to see that. And he took a coaching mentality. He's been around for a long time. He knows a thing or two about winning as College of Idaho has won or shared each of the last four Frontier League, Frontier Conference titles. But also, he's played, played at the highest level, knows a thing or two about football and baseball for that matter. But he wants the older players to teach the younger players. It's about relationship. It's about trust, and I think that's what came across as much as anything. It's about trust with Coach Morosky and his team. He wants the players to, to take his message and get it along to the other players, and it just be a, a line of relationship to where uh, they build upon what each other brings and, and build on one another. So that was something I'm looking forward to seeing College of Idaho picked at the top of the preseason ranking. Looking forward to seeing what they will bring to the table this season. I also want to give a shout out really quickly before I I finish to Dr. Scott Crawford, who is now the new commissioner for the Frontier League. Comes from the KCAC and the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference. Thrived under his leadership. Saw improvement in so many different areas across the board. Saw an increase into its membership through conference realignment. And now, of course, the KCAC has 12 schools, which means they've broken up into two divisions. They get two automatic bids to the playoffs in football. That's a big deal. But Dr. Crawford, in an an absence of a, a communications person, because Wally Felt has stepped down, and he's given lots of good service to the Frontier Conference. He stepped out. Dr. Crawford's been there for these for these media days and he's gotten on the zoom meetings and and he's done his part to be a part of the league. So uh, may not actually be in Montana at the time, but he's been a big part of the frontier conference and a shout out to him for giving of himself to make sure that everything still goes well for the league as he makes his way moving into that new position. So the frontier conference is in good shape and the expanded playoffs may see more than one Frontier Conference team make it into the NAI playoffs. We'll see how that all shakes out. College of Idaho at the top of the preseason coaches' ranking. So I'm Joey McWilliams. These are my takeaways from the Frontier Conference media day here as uh, we look forward to the 2023 college football season. Thanks for watching today. Take the time. Please subscribe to Midwest Sportsnet. We would appreciate that. God bless you all. Have a great day.